going on there folks good evening earthmaster here checking in on this may 26 2021 wednesday evening 8 44 p.m west coast time california beautiful state of california uh we're supposed to be 112 next week yes you heard that correctly 112 next week here where i live please someone get me out of here uh, a 4.1 earthquake striking up here off the coast well, actually right almost right smack dab around the uh let's go ahead and check that out real quick let's get up onto this map from the usgs before i uh before i do any wrong guesses uh there's the solar let's go ahead and check that out here in just a second zoom over here right off i believe that's at uh 4.1 that's right russia I was going to say off the coast of Russia, but that is right smack dab underneath this continent uh, area into the subduction zone. 272 kilometers downstream of this subduction area, uh, the Kuril Kamachatka, Kamachatka Trench area at the point of the Aleutian Trench and this area right here. Very dynamic area when it comes to strong, very strong earthquakes and pressure gradients. Uh, this one... A pretty weak earthquake but the depth of this earthquake is uh, very uh, concerning in a way it's pretty deep in this movement uh, in, in this area up here another uh, somewhat deeper movement earthquake here off the coast of Japan earlier 4.8 at 35 kilometers but overall folks um, there's not a whole lot of updated movement in the uh, well since the time I did the update video uh, a couple hours ago Still haven't seen any significant movement south Japan uh, through the Solomon Islands, Samoa area. So looking kind of looking kind of quiet, folks. We're looking at potentially uh, um, something picking up here pretty soon. Uh, after this update video that I did last, uh, well, a couple hours ago, we did see a 4.5 in Rwanda area, 13.3 kilometers below surface. This is in an area where we've seen uh, a little bit of earthquake activity over the last oh, week or so. Here's the last seven days. You can see that uh, swarm of earthquakes out there. Most of them staying under 5.0. The strongest one we had in this area was a 4.7. Uh, but any, anytime we see a swarm of earthquakes like this, there's always that possibility of possibly seeing something significant in this region. So still kind of keeping an eye on that region of Africa uh, around the uh, Rwanda area. Uh, just a heads up for you folks there. North America. Uh, what do we got here in the United States? Uh, a little bit of movement up here in the uh, north part of the state along the coastal range. But other than that, folks, there hasn't really been any significant movement uh, um, from that update video I did earlier. It looks as though, and I'm not for sure if I covered that activity throughout Yellowstone there in that linear, kind of a weird, weird fashion of a line of earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, before we get to the space weather, let's check out the activity in Yellowstone. There's there's a little bit, and, and I can't say for certain, let's see here, none of this activity has shown up on any other seismograph station. So either they got this, Either they got this uh, cranked up pretty far when it comes to the sensitivity to where it's picking up stuff that's very, very light, or this is interference. But uh, to me, that looks like earthquake activity in this region of Yellowstone National Park, a little, uh, little west thumb there. But for the most, for the most part, not a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot going on there. Uh, what else we got in the trimmer map? That is something we didn't cover in the update video. Looking at it tonight, 200 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Looks like we're seeing a little uptick around the Van, uh, Victoria area, uh, the uh, Vancouver region, um, and a little bit of activity into the central coast of Oregon and also Northern California, including areas down here in the Northern Sacramento Valley around my area, uh, this very Southern end of the Cascadia. So very possible that we could be seeing some uh, surface rupture quakes here pretty soon in the area um, northward here from that trimmer area. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that pretty closely. You got trimmer 
You got trimmer movement going on down dip downstream. Uh, it's ultimately adding pressure up here, back building pressure along the surface and ultimately up here along the Cascadia mega thrust area. So that's uh, we'll keep an eye open for uh, further movement in this region. Solar weather, folks. I think you know what I. I think to be honest that we're looking at a uh, dud of an activity. Okay, it did reach um, G1 KP index up around five today. You can see that red line indicating that uh, um, activity right there, and then it died down. This was this was earlier, way earlier today. Uh, and then since then, with the past few hours, it's died down, and now it looks as though it's picking back up uh, within the last couple, uh, within the last hour or so. So we're still underneath a uh, uh, G1 potential geomagnetic storm there, um, but not a G2. You know, we're we're not looking at that anymore. That uh, potential KP index up around six. It reached five. You can see that KP index five, just for a little bit. But this is just a rinky dink I, i'm not even joking the word though i think the word i'm looking for is rinky dink solar weather activity it's nothing that uh that would impress me whatsoever i've seen more significant storms in the recent past uh than what than what we're expecting or what we're seeing today uh just kind of it's it's kind of odd folks Here's the latest information here. Speed kind of ramping up a little bit, around 400 km. But this is, even then, that's very minor. 400 density is just all over the place. There's no solid blast of material. It's all just kind of, okay, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there, maybe a hit and miss, but nothing solid. Um, just very disappointing. Uh, even the temps down there in, the cabin, uh, in this area right here, very low. So... I, I I don't know, man. I, I think it's a dud, to be honest. <laughs> it's a dud. It's a it's one of those fireworks, one of those little bitty fireworks you get in this uh, in the in the big package that costs you like two hundred dollars. You know, massive amount of spectacular fireworks, and you light it up, and it's just a dud. Um, that's what I think, anyway. My my from what I'm seeing, it's just it's not impressive whatsoever. But nonetheless, tonight, uh, still G1 possibilities. You can see the KP index is kind of ramping up a little bit to G4, uh, KP index 4 right there with, uh, with the last measurement right there. So we will see what happens, but it does not look impressive whatsoever. Just letting you, just letting you guys know that. Um, what else we got here, folks, to uh, look at? It's pretty much, that's pretty much it, folks. I'm going to call it a night. Uh, Puerto Rico is an area to watch. We've been... Uh, seen a significant uptick in earthquake activity in Puerto Rico, to be honest, uh, up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. This is not an area where we want to see earthquake activity. I did a little uh, documentary earthquake update on this region right here, and this area is very capable of producing a mega quake. So we do not, definitely do not want to see seismic activity increase up here. There's a little one right there, right smack dab on that, right to the west of that trench area. And some further movement inland. Uh, but this is not deeper earthquake activity up here. This is about 7 km, 14 km. This one right here, about 26. We start seeing some further movement up here. Then we can look for, uh, we, we might want to be on guard there in that area. Something that's not, uh, something you don't want to see. Anyway, folks, um, have a good night. We'll chat to you a little bit later. Take care. Peace out.